Hello, this is Kevin from kevinsguides.com and in this video I'm going to show you how to migrate or move a website using Joomla 4 over to SiteGround. Now you can do this with any other hosting provider but it's this one's going to be kind of SiteGround specific. I might do a generic one with cPanel later. So what you'll learn here, we're going to learn how to make a backup using Akiba Backup. We're going to prepare SiteGround for the new website. So if you already have a website on there, we're going to go ahead and delete that. Then we're going to restore the backup. And finally, we will configure Joomla. All right, so let's get into this. I have a local website running on my computer that I'm going to copy over to SiteGround. Now, it doesn't matter where you're hosting your current website, that process is going to be the same. But like I said before, the site ground part is going to be kind of specific. And currently, I have kevinsguides.com and I have a WordPress installation installed on it. And I just want to copy my Joomla installation basically over that WordPress installation. Now, it's not as simple as just copy pasting, but it is pretty easy with Akiba Backup. So the first thing we're going to do is install Akiba Backup. And keep a backup Joomla. There it is. All right, Akiba.com and download the backup core. Make sure you get the version for Joomla 4 if you're using Joomla 4. Download the package. And now we're going to go into the administrator panel for the website that we're copying over. And we are going to install that extension, the Akiba Backup Core. And don't use the install from web tab because if you do that, it is going to install a later version for some reason, which I found out the other day. So make sure you download it from akiba.com and install it this way. Once it's installed, we can go to Akiba Backup for Joomla, Control Panel, and can ignore that warning. Default backup profile is fine. Normally, I've never had it not work right out of the box. I've never really had to configure anything to get this to work. But if you run into problems for some reason, you will have to troubleshoot it. But I've done this probably at least a few dozen times and I've never had an issue with the default backup profile. So go ahead and back up now. And we're just gonna wait for it to finish backing up the database and files and all that good stuff. All right, so it's finishing up. 100%. That took maybe, I don't know, not more than two minutes, I think. So now it says backup completed successfully. We can go into manage backups and you can see my most recent backup. We can go ahead and download it from here. Now it's gonna give us a warning when we click this. This is an archive file, basically like a zip file that contains all the database and site files. So we can just go ahead and download that. Now, it does recommend downloading it through FTP for a secure download that won't corrupt anything. But I've never had a problem with just hitting the download button. You can also download it if you do want to use FTP. You want to log in or if you have it on your local host you want to go to your site's directory and the backups are stored by default unless you changed it under administrator components comma keep a backup backup and then here we have it the uh, the latest file is right there so either download it from the back end or copy it directly or download it through ftp however you want to get it and I'm just going to paste that file on my desktop. So now that is there, the next step will be to download a program called Akiba Kickstart. So just Google Akiba Kickstart, download that, download core, open that zip file up, and it has two files in it, a language file and the kickstart application. And I'm just 
throwing those onto my desktop. So now I have Kickstart and my archive on the desktop and we are ready to go ahead and start moving that stuff over to SiteGround. So first thing I'm going to want to do is log into SiteGround or whatever hosting provider you're using. Go to the websites and pick the website we're working with, which is kevinsguides.com. I'm going to hit site tools. And here's where everything is. So install and manage WordPress. That's, if you already have something installed, you can go to manage installations. Um, let's see. I guess because I did a backup recently, it's not showing up in here. So the other way there, there should be like, um, if it does show up in here under manage installations, there should be an option to just remove or delete it. So you click that. I'm going to go ahead and do this a different way, which is good to know in case you're using a different type of installation. So we will go to the file manager, public HTML, and basically you want to delete all these files. So it pretty sure it doesn't let me select. Does it let me select? Oh, it does actually. It lets me select multiple files at once if you hold the shift key, is it? So if I select all of these and literally everything, 47 items selected, delete, confirm, and now all those files are gone. So if I refresh the page, it's still going to show up because there's a cached version and we should just disable the cache for now. And that is under speed, caching, and we're going to turn it off. And then we're going to also go to dynamic cache and flush the cache or clear the cache. Now when I refresh the kevinsguides.com, we get a 403 forbidden sign and that's, that's a good sign. That means all the files have been deleted. So the last thing I want to do is make sure I don't really need the, the database anymore. So I'm going to go to site MySQL. And we can see I have a database labeled Kevin's Guides and some other database. I actually don't know what that is. So we're actually just going to go ahead and delete both of the or any of the databases that you have here. Now, obviously, make sure you have your site backed up or your new site's all ready to go here if you have anything in here. And if you're just starting with a blank SiteGround account, great. You can still delete the default files. You just don't want to do that. You probably won't have to worry about the database stuff. It's not like a big deal if you leave these databases here but they're not going to do anything. So I'm just getting rid of them for the sake of saving space on SiteGround's servers. Not that I particularly care about their server space. So I just deleted the database and the users. The next thing we're going to want to do is while we're here, we can just go ahead and create a database for the new Joomla installation because it's going to need a database to put all of our information in. We're going to create a user for that as well. So create user. And now that has a username and a password. And we're going to want to keep that written down somewhere. So I'm just going to whip open a notepad and copy that whole thing in there. And I might as well also copy the database name. So database name with the users and password. So that's my MySQL information right there. All right, next thing. We're going to want to upload those files that we backed up earlier and the kickstart. So I'm just going to go to file upload. You can do this through FTP if you want. And I think it only lets me upload one at once unless you put them in a folder. You might be able to upload a whole folder, but since there's just three files, I'm going to go ahead and just do them individually because it only takes a second. So I upload the localhost uh, or JPA file, so the archive file, and we want to be in public HTML, the site's root directory, wherever that is. And upload kickstart and upload the language file. 
so now we are ready to go ahead and install this um, so i'm not why am i going to local so we want to go to the live the website that we're trying to put trying to copy or migrate over to so kevinsguides.com in this case slash kickstart.php so i just went to the kickstart file and it is by default going to select the archive that is in that directory so you should only have one archive file in there right now um and i don't think there is a password set up for this but for some reason it might it put something in there i'm not sure if that's my browser that did that or what but i can just ignore that because we don't have to worry about passwords and it's going to extract using the built-in, I think it's, um, I forget if it's part of PHP or Apache or what, but there's something that extracts files. And if for whatever reason that doesn't work, there's a, another way you can do it with FTP. Now you probably won't have to do that. So just hit start and it's going to extract all those files from the archive to the web host. This normally doesn't take very long. So that only took a few seconds. If we go back to the site manager, or the file manager, and I might have to refresh this. Oops. Kevinsguides.com, public HTML. Yep. Now we can see all the Joomla files have been extracted and they are in there. So next step is to run the installer. And we want to keep this tab open because it ha turns into cleanup afterwards. It checks the settings, makes sure everything's good. The only thing it's kind of highlighting is recommended display errors off. It's on for some reason in my SiteGround PHP settings, so I can change that later, but that's not really a big issue. And there shouldn't be any errors anyway that I really need to worry about. All right, so hit next. And the database type MySQL, that's gonna work. So MySQL, the host name is gonna be localhost for SiteGround. Now, if you're using a different hosting provider, you might have, they might have a specific place that they are hosting the database from, and you might have to enter that address in here. But for my purposes, it's just gonna be localhost. So if you're using SiteGround, it's localhost. And in most cases, it's going to be localhost. Now I can paste that database name in for the database I created. And I actually forgot to do one thing, I think, when I made that database. So let's go back to my SQL real quick. And yes, I need to add the user I made to that database. So they have the privileges to do everything with that database. So now the user has been added to the database. We can go back to Kickstart copy our username that we generated and the password that we generated so we have mysql localhost username password database name database prefix that's all good just leave that as is and we shouldn't have to do anything here either so with existing cables, if there's something else already there, which there isn't, it would drop them. Don't even have to worry about that. So we hit next. It restores the database. The database was restored successfully, so that worked. Don't want to save that passwords now. And now it's basically taking us to the global config. So this is like when you're first installing Joomla and you set up that global config. Um, and so I'm just going to update this. So no reply at kevinsguides.com is my website. I want my website to send from Kevin's Guides. G U I D E S dot com. Website URL force SSL. I'm gonna leave that off for now. Uh, SiteGround actually takes care of forcing the SSL for me. So if for some reason you don't have that security enabled or encryption, you just um just leave that as none for now. We're not going to change HT access either. And finally, we want to set our super user settings. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to generate a new password for my super user but just because I don't know or remember what my actual test password is. Actually, I do remember. It's just not a very secure password. So I'm going to make a new more secure password now that I'm on a live site. 
And I'm just gonna add that to my notes here. User Kevin, password is that. And I'm gonna blur that out and post. So we got the super user settings set for our account, for the Joomla account, and we click next. And I don't wanna update that yet. Actually update that for this website. So that is, that is the password I just made. So I'm just gonna change that to Kevin. And now my password saved with Edge. All right, the final thing is to go back to the Kickstart core and hit this clean up button. So we wanna make sure we do this because if we don't, it's gonna leave the kickstart.php file in our on our website and anyone could access it at any time and just like mess up your site basically. Um, potentially mess up your site. So we definitely want to get rid of that backup file, the archive and the kickstart files and all the kickstart installation files. So now that we've done that, if I refresh, it's still there. So I just want to make sure it's actually gone. Um, and I actually want to check the, the main page too. So if I go to kevinsguides.com, perfect. So now it looks just like it did back when I was on my localhost, localhost kevinsguides.com. So identical, perfect. So we got the Joomla install moved over to SiteGround successfully. And I'm just gonna make sure I can log in. So check to make sure you can log into the admin panel with that new password. And it looks like everything is good. Everything seems to be working the way it should be. Everything is here. Now, last thing, I wanted to go back to the file manager in the back end and double check that kickstart and stuff's removed. So there's no installation directory here. That's good. Um, there's no kickstart.php anymore and the archive file has been removed. So the cleanup command that I ran worked successfully. And let's just double check that again. Caching, clear cache. All right, so something with the cache, that makes sense. Okay, so now I wanna go to kevinsguides.com slash kickstart.php. It says the requested page cannot be found. So we do know that the kickstart files are gone and the new site is live. So that is how you migrate a website over from localhost or any other hosting provider that you have, as long as it's working over to SiteGround. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, feel free to give me a donate or like and subscribe like every single YouTuber says. Um, take care and have a good one, guys.